Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. So in this episode, what we're going to do is take a look at building this. What is this? Well, this is a non-linear camera slider, and uh, I'm going to show you guys how to build this. I 3D printed this. The uh, parts uh, and everything here will be up on Thingiverse. I'll have also a list of parts here, the hardware that you need to assemble it. And so uh, let's take a look at how it goes together. So before we get into the actual build, one of the things I want to talk about is how does this actually work. So what I did is I actually I modeled this actually off a of panograph, and um, for those of you old school enough to remember, a panograph would have another another two arms, a uh, little bit smaller size built in here, and the idea is is if you had a tracing element here, and you trace this, the panograph would draw a small smaller element here. If you use this element to trace whatever object in, uh, beneath it and put a pencil or pen in here, uh, it would create a larger object. And, uh, you, you know, so that's the basic concept. Now, many, many moons ago, back in the Apple II days, I actually built one of these and machined it, um, if you will. And what I did is I had a potentiometer here and a potentiometer here. And this actually fed into the joystick ports because remember back in the day potentiometers were actually analog devices on an Apple II and a stylus, basically just a plastic pencil went in here and you could trace something and what would happen is that would be represented in, in, inside the computer. And it was a very crude, actually first attempt at uh, you know a, a CAD device for computerized drawing. Now that was many, many moons ago, probably about 30 or so. So, uh, but it was a very interesting device, and that's sort of what I modeled this after. Is what what this is is uh, based upon that. There are two arms which are the same length, they're the same arm, just two of them printed, and they're tied upon two axes. And so what happens is this will rotate, this uh, camera will rotate across this axis. Now, now notice how this holds it constrained with inside of a plane. Now you have to be a little bit uh, talented to make the movements happen, and I'm just kind of going fast so you can kind of see, but if you reference it to the lines, uh, it holds it actually with inside that plane. Now this tripod, this desktop tripod, Manfrotto tripod, is a little bit light for this duty, so that's why I'm having to hold it. I've actually designed this for a larger tripod, um, and also I think I'm going to design up uh, a, a filled a plaster Paris or something concrete filled counterweight that this sits on a desktop and I can move it far easier as well as I'm going to probably have an additional piece come out of here to grab a hold to so I don't have to hold on to this this piece but as you can see if I move my hand out of the way that all the different dynamic movements that this can make which is really really interesting and the way that this actually works is around a set of uh, Six, uh, 608 ZZ bearing. So there's actually eight of them. So there's four in each arm. Uh, we're going to have two screw, two sets of pins here. So one's going to pin uh, this piece together. Uh, one's going to pin this to the tripod holder, which is this piece here. And then the other one's going to pin to the um, actual tripod uh, holder itself. And so once we get all this assembled, um, Again, we'll end up with one of these. So, actually, goes together pretty good. And I like the idea. This is very compact. You can throw it in a camera bag, etc. Uh, run with it, and very, very portable device. And you can see I have got my old uh, uh, iPhone 4S, which I use for a lot of shooting around the 3D printers and that kind of stuff on here. So, let's get to the assembly. Talk about the assembly piece a little bit. So, one of the first pieces. Uh, is going to be the arms. Now you will have to print these. I recommend printing these with support so you see a little bit of infill support that I've cleaned out here um, sitting on the bed like this. Also what I do is I take a clean out tool, run it around the inside of this race to taper it a little bit to uh, insert the bearings and then what we do is um, we'll press the bearings in. Now what we'll do is we're going to utilize this vise. I'm going to move this off to the side for a little bit. Uh, and, and one of the things, this, this might be a little bit tedious, but I also suggest doing one side at a time. I, I tried to get a little ambitious once and do two sides, and, and it just does not work out very well. So you kind of center the bearing inside of the, uh, the arm, and then what you do is you open up the vise. And this actually works better if it's on the edge of a table. And then what you want to do is, is, I start with the high side of the vise, 
and get it started in. So now it's it's fairly started in. And then now what I'm going to do is put the center of it in here. And again, this works better if it's on the side of a table so it actually uh, allows you to spin it all the way around. But obviously it's hitting the bench so it's stopping it. And then so you just simply tighten that down. And see, there you go. The bearing should be roughly flush with this. Now what we'll do is we'll, you know, repeat this eight times, if you will. And then we will be finished with the arms. So since, uh, since you guys get the basic idea, what I'm going to do is from here speed it up until we complete the arms. Okay, so we're back. We've got uh, all eight bearings pressed in. And sorry, I had to move the vise back a little bit um, in some of that time lapse uh, because it's just easier if this uh, end could spin past the edge of the table. Uh, and they're all pressed in. And one of the things you notice, if they went in a little bit cockeyed, I could just kind of square it up in the end by uh, putting this back in and touching it up a little bit. Uh, however, all that came out pretty good. So we now have this piece set. So in the next uh, component we need to do is... Uh, attach these two arms together. So what we're going to do is we have a couple pieces, these are actually tops, it's these thicker ones that are going to pin these together and what they're going to do is they're going to go like this um, together and then what we're going to do is use one of these at the top with a washer um, because now one of the things I should mention is I'm using these uh, cap head, well these sort of flat cap head hex uh, bolts. I've got these at Harbor Freight you can buy like a box of them from under 10 bucks with the washers and everything. And what this does is a couple different pieces. So there's uh, an insert that goes inside the bearing and then there's also a race on here that goes against the race of the bearing. And so what this does is actually slides in like that. And then what will happen is this piece will slide in like, like so. Uh, now these would be, should be a little bit snugger fit, shouldn't be super tight. If they're too tight you might want to take a little bit of sandpaper, but they should not be loose. Um, and, and, and so they, they will pull down. And then basically what will happen is the bolt will pull through the uh, uh, two pieces. So what we'll do is we'll utilize this longer bolt to go through this piece. We'll start at the top, and then we just kind of, you kind of thread this through. And because the plastic is rather tight, it'll sort of thread into the plastic also. So it'll take a little bit of work to uh, get this through the whole piece. And you just kind of hold it. And I'm just taking a hex driver and running this through. So uh, tell you what, I'm going to speed this piece up a little bit. Okay, so now we have this piece in there. So this is now fit in the bearing and spins around. Uh, might have to get a little bit loosened up um, depending on you know how the plastic is and everything. But this is pretty good. You want a little bit of friction on there, not a whole lot. Uh, you know, so it turns 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 rather smooth. So you can kind of spin it around, get the idea. So what this does, and it really doesn't matter. You can pick your aesthetic side. Um, and this, again, will pop through, and this piece will insert, so now you begin seeing, and again, the race on this plastic piece will press against the race on the bearing, and then what we'll do is we'll simply take another one of these end caps, push that on here, put this over, and then we will put this on. Now this is a locking nut, it comes with it. I do recommend a locking nut or a lock washer just to, um, you know, uh, make sure this is tightened up, and then we'll go ahead and tighten this. Now, when you tighten this, you don't want this super tight, you only want it snug, and that's one of the reasons for utilizing the lock washer or the nylon locking washer, I should say, on this side. Is what's going to happen is this is going to tighten up against the nylon in there, and you're going to get a nice smooth movement. Um, with that because again this is holding as one assembly because it's tightening against this nylon in here 
rather than tightening too tight against the races. Again, you shouldn't have any lateral motion being able to pull this way. Uh, so you get a nice smooth movement this way. Okay. So now with that part done, what we need to do is attach it to the tripod base. Now the tripod base, if you noticed in a pre previous video that I did, when I printed this, I inserted two quarter twenty uh, nuts inside of here. And so that's in there. And pretty much like these guys, it simply slides into the bottom of the race. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these, one of these guys, another one, again a washer, and one of the reasons I'm using the washer here is to kind of uh, distribute the force kind of in a unified fashion across here, especially since this is plastic. The metal washers really work great, and they're really attuned to this size, um, if you will. And uh, also, I'll probably have this one, I'm just kind of tightening this up and thinking about it, I'll probably have the open SCAD code for this out on the open SCAD site, so you might want to check there. I think I'm going to post it. I'm definitely going to post the STLs on Thingiverse. I haven't decided yet on the open SCAD code. Um, this is a rather cool project, or at least I think it's a cool project. Uh, so just, again, utilizing uh, this to tighten it up. That's tightened up, and then what we'll do is we'll just place it through here. And again, we'll have to thread it through the plastic a little bit. And then what this will do is thread into the top. And again, you don't want it too tight. And then, now the last final piece is to take this and again, put this in here, use the washer, tighten this on. And again, you can mess around with bolt, bolt sizes uh, because I think, I think these guys happen to be about uh, 35 millimeter, millimeter uh, bolts. And I think this other guy is like a 60. Again, they just come standard in the pack. And um, depending on this guy, you might have to adjust his size a little bit too, depending upon the nuts you use. The particular ones I use, you can use the size. Um, but if you happen to use a little bit slightly different one, you might change the length. And again, I'm just going to tighten this guy down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stick this guy up through the bottom here, get into the bearing, and I oh had another had it sitting off to the side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stick this guy through here. You know what? And I might have lied on the size of this one. I might need the one up. Let me go double check to see how short that is. Um, the other thing you could probably do is put a washer on here and screw this to the top of the washer. But I like the little height that this sets on. Let me try a little bit different size. Okay, so I've decided now, since the 50 was a little bit too long, the 35 was too short, the 50 was too long, I've gone with the 45. So we'll meet in the middle. Uh, so uh, let's give this one a try. Now, one of the things, I do get some comments on this, and, and I could cut, I could edit this out that I screwed up on the bolts, but I'd really like you guys to see this because I get a lot of comments. Hey, that was unprofessional. You should have checked first. But one of the things is I want you guys to see what really happens because we all know things like that happen. And, and again, I think it's good to share those learning experiences. But that aside, I think this one, uh, I think this one will bring me a lot closer. So anyways, let me uh, screw this in. And one of the things that you can also do, you don't have to use one of these um, uh, tripod tops. You can also use one of these, what I refer to, pins. These are also thicker to adjust the same difference because you're simply screwing this down. So if you find that your bolt choice is, is a little bit challenging, like this one can be, then uh, because this is a little bit different top than the one you, you probably can't see, I'm pointing to it. This is a little bit different top than I used over here. So. Uh, uh, it's not probably going to screw in as far, but, but again, you'll kind of get the picture. Um, so.
So there you go. Now you could also put some washers in here. I'm just for demonstration purposes going to leave this because it, this bolt isn't screwing in as far into it as it did on this one. Uh, so again, I could utilize instead of the tripod cap, I could utilize one of these pins which are thicker or place a couple washers or one of the things I'm going to do. So watch for updates is put that in there. But anyways, kind of long story short, now what you have is this arm just like this assembled. So really a cool project and really a lot of fun to work with. Uh, you get a lot of interesting video of video and, and, and effects, you know, panning across, especially smaller objects. I like to use, use it on the bench, um, you know, to kind of get, uh, you know, close up, um, you know, uh, you know, pans and that kind of stuff of going across the desk like you see here. Because one thing I am going to mix up, as I've already mentioned, is, is a table weight where this bolts to um, a, a counterweight on the table and sits here and sits up a little bit higher. And then so I can just actually, because what I want to do is I'm going to do a version that sits on this bench right here as I'm doing videos and I can just, you know, really quickly just go through and whip something up and then add that video to my uh, format. So anyways, I will have this out on Thingiverse, and um, hey, go ahead, print it if you do. You know, please let me know you printed it. You know, put a makeup there on, on Thingiverse. You can follow me on Thingiverse also. Um, and I'd like to hear any comments. What do you think I can do to make this better or improve this design? Happy to hear it. And uh, hey, so hit the thumbs up. Um, also, don't forget the subscribe button is going to be coming up over there. So subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And hey, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.